it's June and it's quiet. Seems like a good time to do a, a little garden tour. This is the front garden and things are really, really hanging in there, really looking good. I've transitioned from uh, early spring garden to a late spring garden quite nicely, which will slide on into a summer garden seamlessly, or at least that's the plan. I have this uh, clover here, which was in the bathroom. I brought it around St. Patrick's Day, you know, one of those little cheap ones they have everywhere. And since I brought it outside, it has really just constant flowers, constant. And um, I really enjoy it. So that's cool. And if there's a burnt leaf, I just literally come over to it. Oh, wow, look at that. Well, that wasn't for a leaf. Was it? Is it? No, it is. But it's a little tattered. I guess luck is luck. Whether it's tattered or not, I'll take it. I had this uh, couple poppies here, which were which were nice. I remember putting some seeds here, and then you know these are California poppy. I have a pansy which is hanging in there. Uh, this stone crop sedum. Some petunias, a little micro hosta, which is flowering quite nicely. Uh, some more sedum, just a mix of mix of things. Have a fig here, along with some coleus, which the coleus will devour this fig. Um, and then this little trailing plant here is some purple. Hey, look, a little grasshopper. Um, just, you know, some pucara. Some springtime flowers that are seen a better um, time, but I'll keep them for now. And then once they're done, I'll pull those out and then put the pot away. Because there's nothing really I could replace those with for the summertime. So I'll just, you know, put the pot away until next year. But it added some great color. And if I swing over here, I have my rose, which is doing quite nicely. I have a story about these roses, well, my other rose in a minute, but these are doing quite nicely. And I love that it's right here near the steps because when they blossom, you really do smell this strong perfumed air. So that's nice. Behind that are all my pots that I did this year with annuals, um, I just, you know, couldn't resist every time I went into Lowe's seeing these annuals. So I created one pot after another, and it was it was quite nice, quite nice to enjoy. There's some uh, mixed um, things in here, like this one has a Euonymus, and the other one back there has an Azalea. Um, there's some uh, woolly, woolly thyme here. Um, so there are some things that'll stay, but other than that, um, they're mainly um, annuals, which really added some nice color. I'm gonna just pop a squat right here. I have this purple sand cherry, which is doing quite nicely, adding just uh, color difference amongst all this chartreuse green. Um, coming from the lemon cypress here and you yeah, have the salvia which was really nice I cut that back and I left a couple blooms so I don't know what it is but um and I was really afraid to cut it back because I've never planted salvia before but you have to you know cut it back so it'll have another um, flush of blooms later on in the season which is already starting to put out some um, some growth which is which is which is great so that's good. Behind that is balloon flower and it's echinacea right there. Um, right here we have a blanket flower. <coughs> Excuse me. We have this um this um <coughs> purple and green clove which 
we brought that from Maryland, me and the kids, and um, that just breaks up that green. We have this um, evergreen bush here, which there were two right next to each other. And I decided to take the uh, the one on the end out because it was just really making things tight over there. And uh, I just put in some um, hens and chicks and hopefully that corner fills out with those and that'll be great. Uh, I didn't throw away the other bush either. I put it in the back and I'll do a, a tour back there another day. Um, I have this azalea bush here. I'm trying to not create a shadow. Uh, I think I'm not doing a good job, which I thinned out. And it just kind of like really just this, everything just weaves together so nicely. It's amazing how nature accommodates for its neighbor. You know, these are all different plants from all different times planted at many different stages, but seem, they kind of like grow together seamlessly and create this like really pleasing tapestry of color. Um, which I enjoy. I enjoy textural differences and um, tonal differences. There doesn't necessarily have to be blossoms to make a pleasing uh, garden. Uh, mine's is heavy on textures and uh, foliage. Uh, the glossiness of the rose against maybe the um, matte um, smaller leaf of the salvia just you know but they complement each other and with having that bluish green chartreuse um, you know what I mean <laughs> everything kind of like is really like cohesive there's nothing really there that's like ah it really sticks out and then when that moment does happen it's with something like that coleus which is quite intentional to have something that just like bow just really pops out because it breaks up all of that that green you know and and and, and allows your eye to just really just have something different here so I dug two holes and plop plop those in there last year I think I had polka dot plant in there which towards the end of the season was about two and a half feet tall and it was really really nice and for a minute there I thought it was going to overwinter it just would not die and these coleus, I don't know how they're going to do, um, but they're really taking their time to grow, which is great because if they just got really big really quickly, it would be just like, you know, always constantly having to maintain them. But they're they're just breaking up that green and, and adding a nice little moment. Uh, over here, you have some liriope, which I cut back at the beginning of the season, and it's breaking up this texture over here. Oh, yeah. Look at that shadow. My hair is looking like the liriope. Um, but, um, but yeah, if you can see, it's uh, the creeping jenny, the liriope, and the pennywort, and clove, and sage, and this amazing um, uh, prickly pear, which is going to have a million blossoms on it this year. I'm excited about that. Look at all those blossoms. That's like stunning. So yeah, that's gonna be great. And then if you just slowly pan over, you see the, the Barberry and there's a Rose of Sharon, Bonsai, and my new um, Japanese maple right here. So this Japanese maple takes the place of a rose bush that was right here. And the rose was great, but I found myself having to spray it all the time because the leaves were beginning to look like uh, Swiss cheese from different bugs having their fill. So I intended on ripping it out, but I thought it would just do too much damage. So I just cut it to the um, surface of the soil and right next to it planted the uh, Japanese maple, which I really enjoy the uh, leaf structure and the size of the leaves so that should be quite nice and once it grows up it'll create a nice little um, dappled um, canopy above the ground cover which will allow things to grow a little slower because right now they're getting pretty much full sun all day so that should be good and behind that has a false holly which you rarely get to see because it was kind of like covered up by the rose so that's 
um, this Rose of Sharon, which is bonsai in a pot here, is looking nice. I would say it needs more iron or it's deficient in something, but I don't see the dark veins. The leaves are really like a day glow chartreuse color, but it looks fairly healthy, you know, and it's going to look quite nice with the blossoms of the uh, sedum, which are going to be this uh, yellow. So that should look great on um, there. And I like it because I can just rotate it. Uh, so that's kind of cool. The Columbine was wonderful. I've never experienced Col Columbine before, but um, we picked this one up in uh, Maryland on our spring break. Um, and the kids really liked the flowers and I I've never seen something so unique before with these little tails on the back. So we had to had to bring it home and it it has just kept it keeps producing. You know, I'm looking forward to having seeds that I can collect and spreading them in the back. So um, I can have that for years to come because that was just quite stunning. Um, this creeping Euonymus here. It, it creeps in a good way. <laughs> I do have to, to, to watch it though because it wants to just go everywhere. But um, I, I really do like its enthusiasm. So um, I've trained it up this trellis here and created a nice little topiary, which I just kind of like, you know, shape every now and again. Um, so that's kind of cool. And there's that shadow again, but. I wanted to show you this uh, fig here. I planted alongside of this um, ceramic shard that I had. I threw this in college in a ceramics class and I refused to throw it away. And it just, you know, works nicely. It has like a little thing around this uh, fig, which is doing quite nicely. Hopefully that grows in this area and becomes something that works in the garden. Columbine, just great. We got this um, lavender, which I almost killed it because I forgot to add some supplemental water. Um, but it perked right back up and pushed out some more blossoms, and it looks great. And that is in front of this uh, prickly pear cactus which again is full of blossoms and they're like butter yellow so that's going to be really nice when that when that happens there's a spirea and a rose of sharon and a pencil cypress and a pencil something sky pencil so it's an evergreen that gets about eight feet tall but it only gets a foot and a half wide which would be nice in that corner I have this um, Arbovita here, which it's like a beacon of light. I've always liked how bright it is in the winter and in the summertime. So, um, anybody who follows the channel know I always struggle with views and negative views behind my garden. So, I've put up the block there, as you can see, and it for me helps tremendously keep my eye on the prize and I'll just leave it at that I have this um what is this this is a uh, a lilac I believe which is taking its good old time to grow but um it was planted this year so it should be much more vigorous next year behind that there's like a watermelon um, I think that's what it's called Hukra, um, there was some poppy that didn't do too well. There's this evergreen topiary type form that I need to clip. Um, there's some more coleus, which that's gonna be quite nice back there in the shade. Um, these pots were filled with um, summer annuals, which they're pretty much done now. So I've replaced them slowly with um, those coleus, which are going to be really really good the next pot has that woolly 
at Wooly Time and um, it has a Columbine and uh, an Azalea. And, you know, a bunch of stuff. This pot here has a hooker in it, which decided to just get 35 feet tall, which I'm not mad at it. It looks good, you know, and it's in a pot. So once it doesn't look so well anymore, I could just pull that right on out and, and um, either put another pot there or just open things up once this um, Black Eyed Susan um, gets bigger and has much more of a presence. And like I said, I have um, balloon flowers here which are just starting to bud up. <coughs> and you know, things are doing their thing. Everything is looking quite nice. This is the middle of part of the day, so the sun isn't the greatest, but I really did want to give an update on, oh, forgot to talk about honey. Honey, honey, honey. Yes, it's called Honey from Win Proven Winters. And I can give you a better look over here one moment. I planted it in two places because I just really like the flowers. And it's newly planted, so it's not a, it doesn't have much of a presence, but I'm hoping, hopefully, it'll fill out this area here and trail down and just be really nice eventually. But it's Honey by proven winters and honey is next to these things that I just call they look like sunny side up eggs I don't know or daisies or something they're just really nice and they've been so prolific I kind of like parted it and just put that right in the middle but they I thought they were gonna fizzle out in these hotter temperatures but as long as I keep them watered they've just been producing and producing and producing and producing so I can tell you the name, but um, I've been enjoying those a lot. So, here's the garden. Everything looks good. And there's a lot more blossoms amongst the foliage this year. I guess as you um, grow as a gardener, you get a little bit more confidence with um, mixing things although uh, i still am a fan of texture as you can see there's texture on texture and scale and composition it's not so reliant heavily on blossoms it's more about the other things that people forget about and um i just brought my um prized possession out here which is this um Caladium. I brought these bulbs back from Southeast Asia at least four or five years ago and I've continually grown it since then. It's never not grown. It's gotten bigger. It's gotten smaller. I've cut it back but it's constantly been growing. So this year I decided to put it outside and, and let it go for it right here on the porch. And um, I will cut all the leaves off if I bring it back in the in the house in the fall time but I just want to see how brilliant this will be outside it looks wonderful inside but uh, I know outside it, it, it shall thrive so I'm looking forward to having this big thing here and which you know as I said really means a lot to me because it was my last trip that I took before all the madness happened so you know I'll keep you updated on that but in the meantime peace and blessings and happy growing